We hope you're ready, because you're about to learn who the worst people in America were. From serial killers who did unspeakable things to science experiments gone wrong, you won't believe what these 20 Americans did. Number 20 on our list is the American known as the Merchant of Misery. James DeWolf was the head of one of the largest slave importing families in America. Based out of Rhode Island, DeWolf amassed a huge fortune selling other humans. Normally, we think of slavery as happening in the southern states during early American history. However, DeWolf made his fortune by selling slaves in the northern territories. He was indicted for murder in 1790 for throwing a sick female slave overboard on one of his ships, but the charges were dropped. Anyone who dealt with the slave trade was a bad person, but making tons of money off of selling other people without any remorse makes James DeWolf one of the worst Americans ever. In the 1600s, William Stoughton was the judge that presided over many of the Salem witch trials. He was a crazed madman who saw witches around every corner. He's also the 19th worst American on our list. Stoughton had no legal training and was only educated for ministry. When women in Salem were accused of being witches, Stoughton presided over the trials. He had no intention of allowing the women representation or witnesses to defend them. Instead, Stoughton used his non-existent legal background to condemn the women on the basis of what he believed. He sent 19 people to the gallows to be hung for witchcraft, 14 of which were women. William Stoughton was the worst fake judge presiding over fake claims in American history. Sometimes we forget how terrible Americans were earlier in the country's history. The atrocities on other peoples, especially those native to the land, were sometimes unfathomable. John Shivington's name is one you've probably never heard before, but he's number 18 on our list of the worst Americans for what he did to native peoples. On November 29, 1864, Colonel John Shivington ordered the massacre of over 150 Cheyenne and Arapaho women, children, and elderly at Sand Creek, Colorado. They had already surrendered, but Shivington ordered his men to take no prisoners and he watched as his troops slaughtered the defenseless indigenous people. And something to keep in mind as you try to grapple with this terrible American, he was also an ordained minister. For number 17, we come to an early American president. Presidents can be polarizing depending on who they are and what party they belong to. However, only one president did nothing as the United States literally got ripped apart. James Buchanan idly sat by as the southern states spread slavery further west after the Louisiana Purchase and Mexican War. During his inauguration, he vehemently supported the Dred Scott decision in which the Supreme Court stated that Congress could not keep slavery out of newly acquired territories. Buchanan also refused to challenge states that intended to secede from the Union. Instead, he let the situation become more and more out of control until finally it was all but inevitable that the southern states would leave the Union and civil war would ensue. The really messed up thing is that he repeatedly claimed history would remember him fondly as a president who did the duty given to him by the Constitution. Unfortunately for Buchanan, history remembers him as one of the worst presidents of all time. And speaking of the Confederacy, there was one American who may have been the worst of all the rest during the Civil War. Nathan Bedford Forrest is number 16 on our list because of the heinous war crimes he committed during the Civil War. In April of 1864, an entire garrison of black Union soldiers surrendered to Forrest's troops. Rather than take the soldiers prisoner, he ordered them killed even after they laid down their weapons. And this was not just an execution, it was a slaughter as Forrest ordered every soldier in the garrison to be killed. It should come as no surprise that Forrest was also one of the founders of the KKK and may have been the organization's first Grand Wizard. Either one of these atrocities is enough to make Forrest one of the worst Americans of all times, and together they put him high on the list. Men of the cloth are supposed to be loving and pious, but not Father Charlie Coughlin, who is the 15th worst person in America. He used his popular radio show in the 1930s to spew hate, fascism, and anti-Semitism across the country. He's considered to be one of America's first mass propagandists, and he did not have a nice message to spread. Basically, Coughlin was the first person to use the airwaves to spread radical, unfounded messages of hate. Unfortunately, he would not be the last person to do this, and the practice persists even to this day. Most of the worst people in America tend to be men, but not all. Some American women can be just as bad. Number 14 on our list of the worst people in America is Belle Gunness, also known as Hell's Bell. She was one of the worst female serial killers to ever live in the US. Her body count may have been as high as 40 people between 1884 and 1908, 
Belle lived in Chicago, where she killed two of her husbands and all seven of her children. She collected the insurance money on her victims' lives to live a life of luxury. Belle was also reported to have lured suitors to her farmhouse, where she would drug and kill them. When things started to go south for Belle Gunness, she faked her own death by killing her maid and last three children. Then she burnt down her house with all the bodies inside. When the investigators looked into the fire, they found that smoldering remains of the adult body were too small to be Belle. They also uncovered that she had withdrawn all of her money from the bank only days before. Belle Gunness was never found, but her atrocities most definitely make her one of the worst people in America. Number 13 is a lesser known murderer in American history. Her name was Clementine Barnabet. She lived in Louisiana, where she may have murdered as many as 35 people around 1910. But it's not the amount of people that got her on this list, it's how she killed them and why. Barnabet was a member of the Church of Sacrifice. When arrested, she stated that the priestess of the church had given her conjuring bags, which would make her undetectable to the police if she committed a crime. Barnabet claimed that her first murder was just to see if the voodoo magic worked, and then all subsequent murders were the will of the church. It was reported that several of Barnabet's victims were chopped to death by an axe, making Barnabet one of the earliest axe murderers in American history. What this next American did is so messed up and unbelievable that even the Nazis kept tab on his work. Number 12 on our list is Charles Davenport. Davenport was an American proponent of eugenics. This alone makes him a bad person, but what he did to others in the name of science makes him one of the worst people in America. His goal was to create an American master race of Nordic and Anglo-Saxon Protestants. He advocated for immigration restrictions of undesirable ethnic groups. Davenport was also a vocal proponent for sterilization of certain groups and forbidding marriages between races. He also contributed to the unknown sterilization of between 40,000 and 70,000 people during this time. Most of these people were poor, uneducated, and of non-white populations. This was a dark part of American history not often talked about. Davenport and his colleagues literally sterilized tens of thousands of Americans. At the end of World War II, German leaders cited America's eugenic sterilization laws in defense of their own actions at the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunals. Think about how messed up that is for a second. Number 11 on the list of worst people in America also exploited pseudoscience and bad practices for his own means. Both animals and humans were definitely harmed by this next American. At the turn of the 20th century, John Brinkley made millions of dollars through implanting goat testicles in men to help restore their virility. I think it's pretty obvious why he's on the list of worst people in America. Eventually, the American Medical Association sued him for libel and his practice quickly collapsed as he went bankrupt. He did this procedure to hundreds of men. 42 of which we know died from infections after the procedure. None of the men had increased potency because of the goat testicles now attached to their body. We're now moving forward in American history, and you may be surprised how much worse things get. The worst people in America are actually more recent than you thought. The tenth worst American on our list is Samuel Little. Little was one of the most deadly, if not the deadliest, serial killer in American history. He claimed to have killed as many as 93 victims between 1970 and 2012. Although not all of these murders were actually connected to Little, the FBI did launch an investigation to see how many innocent lives were taken by the serial killer. They confirmed that Little killed at least 50 people, and that it was likely his total body count was closer to 90. Most of his victims were strangled to death, so the last thing they ever saw was the crazed look in Samuel Little's eyes as they slowly lost consciousness. Ted Bundy's a name you probably heard, and it should come as no surprise that he is number 9 on the list. Bundy was often identified as charismatic and good-looking, which is an odd description for someone as terrible as this serial killer. He kidnapped, abused, and murdered numerous women. He confessed to killing 30 women, but the worst part is that many of the lives could have been saved. Bundy was arrested and incarcerated multiple times, but he escaped from prison not once, but twice. He murdered multiple victims in the same day and is even reported to have abducted multiple women from the exact same location only hours apart. He was eventually executed by electric chair, but we may never know the full extent of the carnage left behind by this terrible American. If you're afraid of clowns, number 8 on our list of worst people in America is probably the reason why. John Wayne Gacy murdered a minimum of 33 young men in the 70s. This should be enough to make him one of the worst Americans of all time, but this gruesome murderer took things to nightmarish levels. He's known as the Killer Clown. That was because he performed shows as a character named Pogo the Clown or Patches the Clown at different children's hospitals and charity events. He would abduct young men from these functions and bring them back to his house near Chicago where he would torture his victims before eventually using a garrote to strangle the boys to death. What's worse than a person committing their own atrocities 
people who get others to do the bidding for them. And the next few people on our list are the worst of the worst. Number 7 on our list of worst people in America embodies this persona. Charles Manson gathered a group of about 100 followers who were called the Manson family. They carried out as many as 35 killings. One of the most brutal killings was in 1969 when the Manson family murdered a number of Hollywood elites at a dinner party. And although Manson was not directly involved in the massacre, he was charged with inciting the violence. He was convicted of first-degree murder for directing members of his cult to commit the crime. The family members claimed that they had killed in the name of Manson because the Hollywood industry had rejected their leader. Anyone who would brainwash over a hundred people and then use them for his own deranged means is definitely one of the worst people in America. Number 5 and 6 is a tag team duo. They're both terrible people who did horrible things to others. Keith Rainier was the founder of a pyramid scheme turned cult called Nexium. Think of it as a pay-as-you-go program. As you want to learn more about Rainier's philosophy and teachings, you have to pay more and more money. And if this wasn't bad enough, members were so invested that they started recruiting their own friends and family into the cult. It was literally a pyramid scheme. As the years progressed, more and more members, especially women, found themselves being exploited by Keith Rainier and his close associate Allison Mack. They would target anyone who even had the slightest interest in the organization, saying it would change their lives. They collected millions of dollars from their members, since each level in the organization required that they take courses offered by Nexium to receive peace and understanding around their lives. Of course, all of this was just a way to make money and no benefits came of the courses they offered. But this is where things would get really dark. There were special groups of women that Allison Mack would recruit from within the cult. This group of women would be literally branded with a hot poker, and the brand itself was unbelievable. The women were told it was a special symbol, but what the brand turned out to be were the initials of Keith Rainier and Allison Mack. Both Rainier and Mack were arrested in Mexico and extradited back to the US. Keith Rainier received 120 years in prison for racketeering, sex trafficking, and forced labor conspiracy. Allison Mack only received three years in prison for racketeering, even though other women have come forward and said that Allison Mack was the reason they got branded and that she helped lure unsuspecting women into the clutches of Keith Rainier. Number 4 is a man who literally made up a religion to influence followers and hold power over them. This man was a sci-fi and fantasy author named L. Ron Hubbard. The religion he created is called Scientology. You've probably heard horror stories of people who were pretty much abducted into the Church of Scientology and had to escape. Hubbard didn't so much start a religion as a cult. Hubbard used made-up stories about aliens and what he called Dianetics as the foundation of his cult. He promised members that through his teachings they could remove the trauma from their mind and live a life of happiness. Obviously, there wasn't and still isn't any evidence that Scientology and its teachings can provide benefits to someone's life, but people paid massive amounts of money to join the organization and once they were in, they were trapped. Hubbard completely made up the teachings of Scientology and accumulated massive amounts of money from its members. But the lasting effects of Scientology, the abuse of its members, and the lies about being able to help people are what makes L. Ron Hubbard one of the worst people in America. What these next few Americans did will shock and disgust you. The top three worst people in America were all into necrophilia. Earl Nelson makes our list not because of how many people he killed, but who his victims were and what he did to the bodies after they were dead. In the 1920s, Nelson was known as the Gorilla Killer or the Dark Strangler for the murders he committed along the west coast of the United States. He would target middle-aged landladies, rent an apartment from them, and then brutally murder the women. He killed the women via strangulation and then used their bodies after death. Nelson was also connected to the killing of a 14-year-old girl who he not only killed but mutilated after she died. Number 2 on our list is Gary Ridgway. He's known as the Green River Killer. In the 1980s and 90s, he targeted sex workers from Seattle. He was convicted of 49 murders, but is suspected of killing over 90 women. Other than sex workers, Ridgway also targeted women in vulnerable circumstances and young females who were underaged runaways. He would dump the bodies in secluded areas of King County, Washington, and was reported to go back to them to have sexual intercourse with the corpses. And we've now reached the end of our list. The worst person in America goes to Jeffrey Dahmer who took being terrible to a whole new level. Dahmer was a serial killer who targeted mostly African-American men at gay bars and other public places. He lured them back to his house, where he offered them alcohol laced with drugs that would knock them out. After the victims were subdued, he would strangle them to death. Once his victims were dead, Dahmer engaged in sexual acts with the corpses. If this wasn't bad enough, he would then dismember the bodies and dispose of the remains. 
However, perhaps the worst part was that Dahmer kept souvenirs of his victims like their skulls or genitalia. And if all that wasn't bad enough, Jeffrey Dahmer would take photos of the murder and mutilation process so he could remember and relive each heinous act after committing them. The body parts in his fridge and photos of his gruesome atrocities are clear evidence that Jeffrey Dahmer was the worst person in America. Now check out American behaviors considered rude in other countries, or watch Who Are the Most Evil Serial Killers in America.